If you've been doing JavaScript for a while, you might remember the deferred pattern from the jQuery days, but it's still a really useful pattern for working with promises. Here's a pretty simple implementation of deferred. As you can see, we've got three top level fields. We've got the promise, we've got a resolve function and a reject function. And the constructor itself too is pretty simple. As you can see, we create this new promise, which is of course our value for this dot promise. But then inside the callback, we never actually use the resolve or reject functions. Instead, we just assign them to this dot resolve and this dot reject. Now, now our deferred object here has both the promise and the ways to resolve and reject it. So we've kind of turned this promise inside out and given whoever owns this deferred object the capability to both use the promise or use the resolve and reject functions. And there's a lot of different ways you can use this pattern. This could be useful when you're interacting with other APIs that maybe would be awkward to put entirely inside of the promise callback like this. It gives you a way to access those resolve and reject functions from outside that callback. I've been playing recently with the audio APIs that most browsers are shipping with these days. And here's some example code that works with this. Here's a simple function that just gets the user microphone stream. This will prompt the user for permission to access the microphone. And if they approve, then it's going to return a promise of a media stream, which is essentially the stream that the audio through that microphone is coming in on. Now to record that, we have this other function here called record stream as blob. So we want to take this stream and we want to capture an audio blob out of there. So we use the media recorder API for that. We need an array for capturing the chunks of audio as they happen. And then our final blob will be assigned to this blob. And then on our media recorder, there are a couple of events we want to listen to. When data is available, we want to push that data into our chunks array. And then finally, when the stop event happens, we want to take those chunks and wrap them into a new blob. Now, the way that this function works is when you call this function, we obviously create this media recorder, set up our events, and then we're going to call media recorder start. So we're going to start recording audio off the stream, but then we return this function here that should, when you call this function, stop the recording and return the captured blob. So it's a nice simple API. You call the function once to start the recording. It returns another function that you can then call to stop. And that function finally returns the data. However, I think you can see what the problem here is. During the calling of this function, our event handler here for the stop event is not going to happen, right? That will happen at some point after this function has finished executing. And so this blob is always going to be undefined when we return it. We're not going to actually capture this blob here. So how can we actually return the data that we want from this function? Well, as I'm sure you can guess, this is where deferred comes in. Instead of creating this variable here for capturing this blob, let's instead create a deferred blob. And this is going to be a new deferred object. We can use blob and error as our generics there. Blob, of course, being the value for a resolve, error being the value for a reject. Instead of our stop event, instead of assigning to some external blob variable, let's capture that locally. And then let's do deferred blob dot resolve and we'll pass it the blob. And then finally down here, instead of just returning the blob, we can return deferred blob dot promise. Now our function doesn't just try and return the data as is. Instead, what it actually returns is a promise. And when our stop event here happens, the promise will be resolved. I don't think there's another way to write this where instead of returning deferred, we return like new promise here and we try and capture all of the behavior within that new promise so that we can do our resolve function because we need to be able to start this media recorder. And of course we wanna add these event listeners before we get that started. So using the deferred pattern here makes this code very easy to follow and allows us to return the data in the kind of API structure that we have already defined instead of having to maybe change this so that you have to call start and then call stop and then call get data or something like that, which would be, I guess, another way to create an object around this. I like this pattern because it gives us functions and data. It doesn't give us stateful objects that we have to kind of track and maintain. So that is the deferred pattern, a really flexible way to make promises even more useful in your day-to-day -day coding. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe and like this video if you found it useful, and I'll see you in the next one.